All right. So what we're going to do is make some test, test text that flies off the screen into place, kind of like our snowman did a couple of weeks ago. And so to do that, we're going to do distribute to layers, which is honestly how we did the snowman, right? We drew a snowman, then we did distribute to layers that put every piece of the snowman on its own layer so that we could then tween them into place. So go ahead and make a file, file new, and then put some big text on it, whatever you want the text to say. So file new, I'm gonna make mine an action script three. I know the book always says HTML. All righty. I'm gonna do a save as. And call it G1 moving text. All right, I need some big text. So I'm going to choose the T tool. And I'm going to come over here to the characters and I'm going to make it a really large font. Right now it's at 12 points. That's kind of boring. I can't see how big my text is, so I'm just going to guess that 50 points or so would be nice. I may change the size of it later. So I'm going to animate the words animation is fun. Maybe bigger letters. It would be nice if they were centered, so I'm going to go to the paragraph settings here and center the text. But I need to break it up. I need to split it in individual pieces because right now I can't animate the letters individually. So I'm going to need to choose break apart. We did this when we did the shape tweens. With, you select the text with the black cursor if it's not already selected, and you choose modify, break apart. Now when we did shape tweens, we broke it apart again to get it into its individual pixels. But we don't want to break it apart twice this time. We like them being entire letters so that we can move the letters around. I'm trying to get to the big text. Well, to get some text, you click the T, I got you it. put I that, got text. I'm just trying and then to over it. here under properties, you can find the character menu and change the font size. I've changed it to 60 and it's still not the figure here. So if you are changing the size of it, it better have be selected. If I just type this and then I start changing the size, I'm not sure it's going to shrink it. Nope. So I need to go back and select the whole thing and then I can shrink it and lower. Apparently 96 is our largest size. All right, we ready for the next step? Yeah. You select your text and then you do modify break apart until it looks like this, until you see all the individual letters. Don't do it twice like we did a week ago, because then if you do that, it will uh, break it down into its component pixels, like for a shape change, and we don't want to do that. Okay, so now we have this stuff, and we want each letter on its own layer so that we can animate them. I've forgotten where that setting is. It's not where I expected, so I'm going to go and look at my instructions. From the Modify menu, choose Timeline Distribute to Layers. So we have the text all selected. If the text for some reason isn't selected, reselect it. And then go up to Timeline, um, Modify, Timeline, Distribute to Layers. And now layer one doesn't have anything on it anymore. We could even delete it if we wanted to. So my goal is to have the text fly off screen into the middle. 
So after I make some keyframes out here, I'm going to go back to frame one and then drag the letters off the screen so that as we play them, they'll be off the screen, but then they'll come in. Okay. So we're going to insert a keyframe on frame 75 of each layer. Now that's real tedious to do it, you know, one per thing, but you know, okay, 75 on the first layer, insert a keyframe. 75 on the second one, insert a keyframe. There is a command key for inserting keyframes, but I never remember what it is. So I'm just going to use shift click to get a whole bunch of frames at one time. And then right click and do insert keyframe there. But I still have more to go. All righty. And then you're going to put classic tweens on each layer. And you can also do that with shift clicks. So once you've got all your keyframes and all your tweens, go back to frame one and then start moving those letters off screen. Make sure you do that on frame one because we want them to come together, not fly apart. So I did all my keyframes. I've added a classic tween to every layer. Now I'm going back to frame one and I'm going to drag the letters off. I'm going to shrink that so that I have more room. All right. Just pull them off any old way. And as soon as I pull mine off, I'm going to wander around and see how y'all are doing. I'm going to totally cheat and just move the whole word is fun as one word. All righty. So now when I play it, text comes together. Now it loops too fast, right? But you know how to fix that if you want to. Go out to a later frame, you know, and add some more keyframes. So that it'll sit there and pause for a while before it does that again. Or if you want, you could add a new set of keyframes and you can make the letters fly off again. But you know, I think, I think adding a column of keyframes and just letting it pause there for a while would be enough to make me happy. So I might go out to like 150 or something and insert a column of keyframes. Okay, so now that my animation works, sort of, I didn't finish moving all the letters, I'm going to give it some blank time at the end. So I'm going to go out to like frame 140 or 160 or something and start inserting keyframes there. Looks like I did it on 145 this one. I'm going to do a shift click so I can select a whole bunch at once, insert a keyframe. And then when I play it again, you know, the pieces come together and then it waits. And if you wanted to, you could do one more, you know, where the letters flew back apart. That would be cool, but I'm eager to get on to the next part of the assignment. Now, some of my letters aren't flying off, so I'm going to go back to the first frame and just, you know, grab some letters, pull them off. Grab some other letters, pull them off. Remember that you can have them twist and turn if you want. No, you can't. I'd have to use free transform to do that. All right, 
So I'm happy with that. Go ahead and when you're done with that, do a save. And then do a publish. And that'll get you the FL, the uh, SWF that you need to upload if you made it as a, uh, um, as a flash rather than. Oh, I didn't. After we add, add the. Uh, so assignment H is going to have a Popeye like figure walking across the screen. Except the character is actually named Poop Dick Pappy because he's Popeye's grandfather, but whatever. So we have a zip file full of images, and we also have some instructions, a doc file. We know we're going to need the instructions, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that and click Save. Open that up. But I also need those zip file, that zip file full of pictures. So go to your assignments folder, go down to H, and click on the zip file. Here's H, click on pappy.zip. Go ahead and tell it to save. Make sure you take note of where it's saving it if, uh, if you're using Firefox, um, yeah, if you're using Google Chrome like I am. And then you're gonna go out to the desktop and find it and make sure that it's there. So I'm looking for a folder called Pappy. So I went out to the Apple Finder Clicked on Pappy, or clicked on desktop because that's where I downloaded them. Clicked on Pappy and I see all my pictures. And if you look, it's a little walking dude. And we're gonna make him walk. We're gonna make a movie clip of him walking. That's the key is to make him a movie clip. So absolutely make sure that as you start getting into this, you have done the step that says make movie clip. I got a question. Uh-huh. You see <coughs> Go back to animator, do file new. And which assignment was this? I've already forgotten. H. H. All righty, so I'm uh, gonna. Action script. Yep, I'm gonna make it an action script. I'm gonna say okay, and then I'm gonna do a save as, file save as, and call it H walking. Now we need to get all of those cartoon images into our library so we can play with them, so we can start making them walk. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do file import to library. So inside the animator program. So hold up. Yeah, you're good, you're good. No, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't download the, the word. You don't need to, I mean, it, yeah, you can if you want. No. So let's do a file. You did your file new already. So file import to library. That's what we're gonna try to do. File import to library. And then go and find that Pappy folder. If you put it on in your downloads folder, go to downloads. If you put it on your desktop, go to desktop. And if you've downloaded it several times, you'll also see Pappy 2 and Pappy 3 and stuff like that. That's okay, just pick one. Okay, so now, which one? We want them all. So, like select the first one and then go and shift click on the last one. Boom, you get them all. All mine are grayed out. I'll come look. And then click open and that should import them all into the library. So when I click library, I should see all my walking animations. Let's see why it's grayed out for you. So half of the class had this problem, half didn't, I'm not sure why, but if you're trying to import the files and you can't select them, there's an easy way to fix that. When you do file import to library, there's this thing down here that says options. Click on options and then click on all files. So click options and where it says enable, do all files. Yeah, they clear it up. So now. And then you can select the first one 
come down here, shift click at the last one, and then click open. And I just got this error because I've already imported them one time. And so, anyways, so I'm going to cancel out of that. And I'll do a uh, command there. Grab some off. Whoops. Click, 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 click. All right, now if you click on your library, you'll see them all. All right. So, go back to our instructions. From our library, drag the first one onto the stage, but then we need to turn him into a symbol. So, grab walk cycle one from the library. And the way you move him from the library is you just either grab his picture or you grab him from here and you, actually that looks the way to do it. Click on the word, don't double click, just single click it and pull it out and drop it onto the stage. But please don't skip this next step. After you get him out on the stage, do convert to symbol and make him a movie clip. Convert to symbol. Make him a movie clip. I th think I just said call him Pappy Walking. All righty. So Pappy Walking. Call oh, symbol one Pappy Walking? Yeah. And so that's actually what we want to be editing. So you see the little gear symbol over here? Double click that so that we're editing the movie clip now. And you'll know that you're editing the movie clip because you'll see the words scene one and Pappy walking. So we wanna make sure that we see the words Pappy walking up there in the title bar. Gear shift where? You see the little gear symbol right there? Double click that bad boy. Uh, I don't see where you're- You see the library? Oh, okay. Yep. Double click. Okay. All right. So now we're good. So we need to create a whole bunch of different frames and have him moving on each one of them. So let's see. What we're going to do is we're going to select frames two or click on frame two and then go out to frame 24. And shift click them so that they're all there right click on two shift click on 24 right click and do insert keyframes okay. then go back to frame one and that's great so then click on frame two if you need to dial up the size of the frames to make it easy to click on you, you you see this mountain scaler right here you can make the frames easier to click on click on frame two and we want to swap him with the second animation so i'm going to right click on him and do swap bitmap so you select frame two frame two right click on him and do swap bitmap and choose walk cycle two click ok and you're going to do that for each frame. It takes a little while. Click on frame three. Okay, hold up now. You're moving too fast. Yep. Click on frame two, right click, do swap bitmap and choose walk cycle two. Uh -huh. Click OK and then do the same thing. Go to frame three. Okay. Right click, swap bitmap, and choose number three. Mm -hmm. You can just double click on the name in it the file and it goes you ain't going to do the same thing for four now it looks like i goofed up it looks like i didn't generate keyframes when i tried to if you have a whole bunch of frames here that's great i don't have them so i've goofed up i'm gonna undo a whole bunch of stuff there somehow i forgot to add all the keyframes click on two click on 24 oh, right click man. insert keyframe Nope, that still didn't work. I'm gonna to have to add them one at a time, apparently. When did that become a thing? Okay, fine. 
right click on frame two, insert keyframe, right click on frame three, insert keyframe, four, and so on. That's tedious. Why am I having to do it that way? Oh, I could do convert to keyframes. That would have worked. Okay. That's on the same, the, the, the very first path you walk in, right? Right. Okay. So you can insert a whole bunch of keyframes at the same time. My instructions probably say this and I just didn't do it. If you click on one and then you shift click on the other, you get them all selected then you can right click and do convert to keyframes. That has a whole bunch of them. So we need to undo those first. You don't necessarily have to undo them, but go ahead and select, you know, the first one that you don't have done and then go out to 24 and shift click and do convert to keyframes. So now that I have my 24 keyframes, I'm just going to select the first frame, right click on them, choose swap bitmap and choose the first walk cycle. And I'm going to do that for the second one. Click, right click, swap, choose the second walk cycle. And so on all the way down the line. Click on frame three, right click, swap, choose three. Frame four, right click, swap. Four. And I'm going to stop saying this, but I'm going to keep doing it. Mine's is not, the dot's not moving. It's well, that's just. The dot shows you what it was before you went into it. I know, but if you did it again, like if, two, two uh, sessions ago and it's still up in number four. Right, but if you reselect it and then do it again, you'll see that it's now been moved to your new one. It's not moving. I come look. So that's five. That's six. That's seven. Let me get it out to 10 and then I'll stop. Eight. Nine. So if I played it, since I've only done 10 of them, he's only going to do a little bit like that. Once I get all 24 do gone, then uh, his uh, animation is going to be complete. All right, so I'm going to finish him. I was at frame 10. Yeah. So something that's kind of fun to do that you could do as a little project on your own is go find an animation of, of Sonic the Hedgehog running or some other cartoon character, and you can do the same thing. How about to do your own, draw your own? If, if you're that, that, if you're artistic, that's cool. I can't draw my own. <laughs> well, if you can make it work with Stickman. Yeah, I could do it with Stickman. That'd be pretty cool. I'd like to see something somebody do that. That would be pretty cool. 
absolutely would be cool. Just realize they got the numbers on. True, true, yeah. All right, now that I've done it for all 24 frames, if I test it, if I hit command enter, then we'll see him walking. And if he glitches a little bit, it just means that one of the frames wasn't swapped properly. And it can take a little bit of time to figure out which one, but not. I'm going to simulate the glitching by going and setting one of these frames back to frame one. Okay, so if I played it now, it's going to have a glitch in his walking. He's kind of stuttery. So if I had to fix that, I would spin, I would sweep the playback head until I found the frame that was messed up. I could kind of zero in on it. He's swinging his arm up somewhere around there. So I would decide it's probably that one. Uh, right click and do swap bitmap and see, make sure that number 15 was selected. So now what I want to do is I'm going to, since it is playing, it's a movie clip that does play, but I want him to walk across the screen. So I'm going to click on scene one to close the library that I'm editing. I'm going to drag him off to the side and maybe with free transform, maybe I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. Then I'm going to go out to some higher frame, like, I don't know, 150 or something. Right click and do insert keyframe and move him over to the other side of the screen. And then do our classic tween. So when we play him, we're going to see that he's moving across the screen like that. Sure, it's taking him a long time. That's okay. But when we export it with command return, we'll actually see him walking. There we go. All right. Pup, save it or save as if you never saved it. Publish it and upload your files.